Hello, this is Cal Kandilian from Roach Crossing, and today I'm going to do a special video on healthy and appropriate roach keeping because I've seen a lot of threads popping up, especially on the roach forum lately, concerning people having allergic reactions to uh, their cockroach enclosures or to working with their cockroaches. So I'm going to show you my way of keeping roaches, which involves setting up a mini ecosystem in each container that deals with potentially harmful waste products like exoskeletons and frass and um, dead roaches. So let's check out the first part of my uh, system for keeping things uh, healthy and fun. This is my HEPA filter. I bought this set, I think it was um, Sears. And this is actually less for uh, keeping the room healthy for me and more for the bugs because I get a lot of wild caught stuff in uh, from around the United States and I don't want to introduce any nasty fungal or bacterial infections. So uh, it's just a standard HEPA filter. I think it was about a hundred bucks and the replacement carbon filters which actually don't, they, they just sort of remove the odor. They don't actually filter out things like uh, fungal spores. But uh, the replacement carbon filters are about twelve bucks and I replace that uh, every three months just to keep the room smelling fresh. But the actual HEPA filter inside does the real work and I'm told that the longer the HEPA filter runs runs for, uh, the more effective it is. So that's my first line of against, fen, defense against uh, anything possibly getting into my containers and killing roaches, which would cause an outbreak of pests or anything like that. Okay, so here we have one of my hexagon containers, and I use these for a lot of smaller species, like here are some Eurycotus decipians here. Um, I also use them for Daropeltis and a variety of other small species. But uh, these containers are one of my favorite because you can really get a good eco mini ecosystem going in here. Uh, remember in nature, uh, ecosystems aren't a monoculture. They don't just consist of one species. There are usually various species performing different roles, and that keeps things uh, moving smoothly. So you have uh, decomposers like cockroaches, which break up large pieces of plant material or uh, decaying plant matter into smaller pieces, and then you need other organisms to break that up even further. Otherwise, things that are more opportunistic, like molds or fungus, will set in. So, uh, in here you can kind of notice some little white dots crawling along, along the side and along uh, various other places in here. Let's see if I can get a... You can kind of see one there in the very center of the top of that egg carton. And these are some small spring springtails that I found in my colonies uh, one day. And uh, the more I worked with them, the more I realized how beneficial they were. They keep mold levels down, uh, they'll swarm on dead roaches, of course they can't necessarily tackle an entire dead cockroach, but they uh, keep other things like mites off of the cockroaches. Um, and so those are my first line of defense against any sort of uh, fungus or bacteria. And there's a whole bunch of them crawling on that wall over there. They normally, they need a substrate to uh, continue proliferating. As you can see, there's one uh, Eurycotus decipian snacking on some cucumber there. But, um, yeah, so I add those to all of my containers, and they really love to feed on grains, the uh, springtails. So that's usually how I get them started. I'll take uh, a small clump of substrate from one of my other containers and add the uh, add a piece of grain-based food, like dog food, uh, to the new container, and then I'll dump the springtails on top of that, and they'll just colonize around it and spread from there. So uh, also, I don't think you can particularly see any, but let me uh, move things around. There we go. That little fellow hiding in the nook between the two egg cartons is a striped wood louse. And I don't necessarily use wood lice in all of my containers, or isopods, whichever one you prefer. Um, I found that especially the dwarf whites can be quite damaging to smaller species of cockroaches. They'll, they'll eat the egg cases or otherwise disturb the roaches. So I've been experimenting with various other species and so far these uh, purple striped isopods have been doing a very good job in this container and they don't seem to be affecting uh, reproduction of the zebra roaches so that's a good thing. So uh, adding isopods will help by cleaning up dead roaches which can grow fungus or attract the uh, nastiest of vermin forward flies. So that's just a little overview here. So I have uh, springtails and isopods in here. There are also some white soil mites, and these generally aren't problematic. 
Uh, if they occur in low numbers, they'll swarm dead roaches and get to them before uh, nasty things like I mentioned the Ford flies do. So those can be uh, beneficial depending on the situation. So that's this container, and this, this is a very uh, small kind of self-contained environment, so this is a lot easier to keep the humidity up and the heat up. When larger containers, this can be a little bit more difficult. So we'll look at one of those next.